that God challenges us to expect his intervention so that the predictable storylines aren't what gets told. What gets told is the predictable storyline and then God intervenes and now something I was not expecting comes to pass. Here's what I know. Anytime God intervenes in my life or yours, there's a purpose for it. It's for his good. God's intervening so he can bring healing. He's bringing hope. He's bringing restoration. He's bringing forgiveness. He's bringing good things into your life. So when God starts knocking on your door, hey, let's spend some time together. I need to talk to you. And you're wondering, what is it he's going to say? You don't need to fear that. Everybody say, no fear. fear. You need to say it louder. From your couch. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you. But you, you did awesome. High fives. We don't need to fear that. We need to say, oh, great, I'm in. Because the very next thing that God wants to tell you is going to lead you to good. It's going to lead you to the good you want. Forgiveness, restoration, the healing, the hope. That's what God wants. And so he's going to intervene. He wants to jump in on this. And I found that God, even though it seems bleak, it seems insurmountable, It seems that you, I, won't be enough. Then in the end, God intervenes and we're able to do it. Deal with what's in front of you. Expect God is going to come in and get involved in this thing because it's the very thing he wants to do. Anticipate the spirit of a living God stepping in and helping you and doing the very thing that you can't do on your own. Is this making sense to us, church? This is what he's telling us to do. This is what he's telling us to do. Why? Why would he tell us to do this? Because Jesus is Lord. Now, your thoughts are like my thoughts, which means they can consume and they take over and they become strongholds. The things that God wants to do in my life is truly beating against those strongholds, which are nothing but lies and deceptions, half-truths, And they set themselves up in my mind and in my heart. They ingrain deep. This is why Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians, talking about this whole idea of the mind and anxiety and how do we do battle with this. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. We don't get bazookas. Bazookas are cool, but we don't get bazookas. Man, I wish we could give us some bazookas. We could like blow something up. Not people, but something. Maybe those buildings next door, we could have gotten them down that way. But anyway, they were rotten. You don't know that. Sorry, you didn't know that. Our buildings next door were rotten. They're down. We got rid of them. But he says they have divine power to destroy strongholds. Those ideas, those lies, those deceptions in your life, in my life. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion that says Jesus isn't Lord. It sets itself against the knowledge of God. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that stuff going, well, I know God said that, but this is what we think, and we think our voices are the ones that should be louder than his. And you know what? There's a lot of people who say, I'll listen to your voice above his. But that is not what we, the followers of Jesus, have committed to. What we have done is we said, you know what? On those days, on those days, as Jesus said, the blind leading the blind, we're going to be the people who are blind, but being led by the one who sees. That's what we get to do. That's the life we get to live. And that's why we get to have joy in the midst of all of this. Because that is an incredible gift that God gives to us because he is Lord and we know it. And so the confusion is being made right. He's bringing clarity. And then we take every thought captive to obey Christ. We just submit that to Jesus. Well, what did Jesus say about that? Oh, okay, well, then that's what I'm going with. Oh, what did Jesus say about that? Oh, that's what I'm going with. What did the scriptures have to say about this topic? Oh, well, that's what I'm going with. And then we find absolute breakthrough clarity in the midst of all of these things. We are taking our thoughts captive. And we're not taking the cares of this life lightly. We're just putting them in perspective. Everybody's trying to find perspective. Jesus gives us perspective. Most of what we fear, troubled about, anticipate, never comes to us. But listen, too much is riding on our perspective. 
I can tell you this, these, uh, these, these babies that were up here in this last service and the seven before that in the first service, they're counting on mom and dad not being distracted by all the other voices so that they can stay focused and create a home environment where those kids can grow up and learn and experience God and his peace and learn how to walk in his ways. That's what's at stake. That's what's at stake. Our spouses and the life that they're living as they're attached to us. That's what's at stake. Our extended family, our co-workers and their life as it's connected to ours, that's what's at stake. And so, yeah, it's a big deal when he says, don't worry, don't be overcome, don't fixate. And hey, if we don't do this, what's the in, you know, predictable outcome? The predictable outcome is confused perspective, wrong perspective, skewed perspective, everyone else's voices and perspectives. I don't want them. Jesus. Jesus.